Good evening, boys and girls, ladies, mmm, and a gentleman. Turn the lights down low and shut your faces as I wrap you in the cozy blanket of a story. A story as heartwarming and soft as a mother's kiss. Or is it? Shh. Once upon a time, there was a boat. Now, this wasn't just any boat, children. It was a ship. A ship full of friends. Hundreds of friends. Best friends, one and all. A veritable friendship it was. Get it? But it wouldn't be very ladylike of me if I didn't mention the most noteworthy friend on board. Hattie Hattington. Say hi to Hattie. Hattie was like king friend of Friendship Kingdom. Best friend to one and all, and the walking definition of handsome gentleman. Now, one fine morning, Hattie and Pal set out for a new, exciting adventure. What fantastic fantastic wonders would they discover this time? Perhaps they'd come across a scary ghost ship. Perhaps they'd find an island made entirely of candy. Perhaps they'd meet a band of scary, swashbuckling pirates and join forces to find an island made entirely of candy. Who knew? But it didn't matter. So long as they were together, there were smiles to be had and adventures to be shared. Now today, twas a day like any other adventure day. Spirits were uncrushably high, everyone was singing and dancing and having a jolly time. When suddenly the ocean was all like surprise. Rise and a huge, massive storm brewed out of nowhere. Boy, that was quick. And there was thunder. Boom! And the lightning. Boom! And the wind. Boom! And like that, it was over. Is everyone okay? Said Hattie. I don't know what I'd do if I lost even one of you. Hattie continued. But the eye of the storm is very misleading, children. Never turn your back on it because the ocean was all like, psych! And it came back even bigger this time. Twice as big. Would you show you? As if Poseidon himself extended his hand in friendship and they spat in his mouth. Boy, he was pissed. He was mad. And the rain came down like a shower of bullets. It's off. Ah! And the floorboards were buckling and creaking and breaking and pieces of their ship were raining down like shards of broken dreams. And then Reginald comes upstairs and he's all like, I say, gentlemen, I do believe we're in quite a spot of bother. And everyone else was like, really? What tipped you off, genius? And then Hattie was all like, hey, be nice. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Huge giant waves thrashed the boat to and fro. Fro and to. Carelessly sprinkling friend after friend into the cold, unforgiving abyss of the deep deep, dark ocean. Everyone was screaming like, help me! Splash! Splash! And there was this huge whale like, and made it super scary. And I think there was a shark. Yep, there he is. Oh, God. And then Hattie was all like, hold on to your butts. Land ho! And bang, bang, bang! Smash! A shipwreck as foretold by their fate books of fate. And while it seems like the end, this is merely the beginning of another fantastic journey for the brave crew of the SS Friendship. You sure know how to make the best of a confusing and hopeless situation, but boy, this place is quite the enigma, wouldn't you say? I would. And you know, a little warning would have been nice, you know, before they threw us headfirst into this gladiatorial, prisony place with its perilous medley of twisted stage productions that shred the silky fabric which weaves together the fragile blanket of sanity that keeps us sane. But you know, whatever. Either way, it's safe to say we're in quite a pickle jar here. We gotta rescue our friends and get back to Mr. Boat. I mean, they do the same for you, and adventuring just wouldn't be the same without, I don't know, this guy. Best chef in all the land, food so stupid delicious one taste would blow your face through the back of your head. Like bang, splat! And who could forget this quirky fellow? You know, he owns a bat farm back home, and his lifelong dream is to breed a terrifying race of super bats. None of which makes any sense, of course, because he's absolutely terrified of bats. And this lovely lass always tells the best bedtime stories, hands down. Plus, she always smells like chocolate. So that's good. And then there's this guy, and this handsome fellow, and that thing. All your best friends imprisoned. And they don't like it very much because it's bad and horrible. And then there's Hattie, the best friend of all. Why did he stab us in the back and twist the blade? I mean, just this morning, he gave everybody flowers and presents, and now he goes out of his way to hurt our feelings? Oh, I think not. You can't fool me. Hattie would never betray us. B betray us. Never. Something fishy's going on here, and I think I don't don't like it right now at all. It must have something to do with that scary, albeit fashionable hat. Sure looks evil. I mean, it's glowing red and stuff. Glowy red stuff is always bad. Everybody knows that. So what dangerous treats lie in store as we continue to unravel this treacherous sweater? I don't know. But use caution as you continue your gallant endeavor. Don't, don't like, fail and die and stuff, because it's all up to you now. 
What? Why did why did do that? That was that was scary. Way to bite the bullet so far! You don't even complain about the prison food! Which is shocking because that stuff tastes like doo-doo casserole with a side of butt salad. But best of all, your riveting performances have the theater bursting at the seams with excited patrons. And with all this extra cash you're raking in, the theater can afford some serious improvements and really start beefing up these horrifying shows of murdery death to appease the fickle crowd. So, so, so that's... Good. And what's the deal with Hattie? He just creepily looms around the theater all day. Look at him looming. It seems like he's been forcefully forced to manage this place. Well, it looks that way. He just sort of sits there. Just as productive as one can be. Yep, living life to the fullest. Whoa, slow down, buddy. Yes, sir, full of salt and pep. Full of pee and vinegar. Overflowing with youthful energy. Say something, Hattie. <laughs> Cat got your tongue? Shut up. No, people really seem to be a precious and rare commodity in this strange part of the world. Seems our little boat wreck was a delicious gift from the heaven gods, and these bizarre cats are taking full advantage of us. What cruel fate left them to roam the grounds of this scary old theater, desperately ruling these bleak premises with an iron f paw? And just how long have they been orchestrating this sinister scheme? I mean, avert your eyes, children. Avert them! There's bony people skeletons everywhere. Scary, right? Now, I'm no genius, but I definitely know how long it takes for a body to decompose, so this must have been going on for at least- Oh wait, scratch that thing I said. <clears throat> so do you possess the courage to soldier onward and uncover the mysterious mystery behind this grim world? Or will your hilarious death screams be drowned out by the sound of your own hilarious death screams? We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. You see? You've really got the crowd eating from your delicate hands now. There's never a dull moment with you at the helm, except for maybe like twice, but I gotta hand it to you. You've got quite the unbreakable spirit. I mean, I'm not nearly as brave as you. If I was in your capably nimble shoes, I'd say to heck with Hattie and my friends. They'll be fine. And then I'd pack myself a nice bag lunch, show these cats my favorite finger, and then I'd make like horse turds and hit the trail. But I'm not you, and you're not horse turds. No, sirs. You are the very definition of the cat's PJs. And speaking of which, these cats are truly bizarre. Why are they here? I mean, I've got my theories. Perhaps they're aliens from another world. Maybe their genetic experiments gone awry. Or could it be that they were once normal kitties? Normal kitties who evolved into the strange, unpleasant creatures we see before us? These hideously adorable abominations with their beady eyeballs, giant bloodthirsty tiny mouth fangs, slashy paw claws, and stanky funk breath. Plus, they're awfully rude and crabby. I think they all need girlfriends or something. I'm a cat, see? I'm grouchy, see? I like to run around all day and hurt people's feelings, see? But don't take them lightly. Although sassy and lazy by nature, cats are awfully crafty, and finding a weak spot in that bright orange furry armor might prove difficulty. M uh, minus the why. They're always watching, children. I see them lurking in the shadows. Lurking hard! Or hardly lurking, see? On that note, this whole theater's like a bad joke. But how did things get so bad? At one time, this theater was a nice place, with flowers in every vase and smiles on everyone's mouth, faces. Can you believe it? I wouldn't believe it. I mean, if you told me that, I'd more than likely call you a liar and walk away. And, um, find some place to get ice cream to replenish the innocence you blackened with your filthy deceits. I like strawberry. Just keep your wits about you as you descend deeper into the belly of the beast. And perhaps you'll find a way to put an end to this madness. Take my dainty hand as I whisk you back to a time long forgotten. Long before the sh... the, the poop hit the fan here. The year was 1759 ish, whatever. Self-made billionaire, cat fanatic, and theatrics aficionado Perham Furbottom set out to create the biggest, ritziest, most thrill-inducing theater ever. And he did. And it was the talk of the town. Trust me, if you weren't there, you were most assuredly square. People were seriously like, what, you weren't there? What are you, a nerd? Opening night was a thing to behold, as Lord Furbottom organized the grandest, jaw-dropping show ever seen. There was explosions and dancing girls, dancing girls who exploded, Ooh. exotic animals, exotic animals who exploded, incredible feats of magic and wonder with fantastic production values all around. Furbottom sat for days on end, marveling at his breathtaking creation and packing handfuls of delicious, buttery popcorn into his mouth. But alas, his illogical contempt for intermissions ultimately caused his demise. And during the show, Furbottom passed away, having pooped himself to death on the way to the bathroom. Legend says he clenched his butt as hard as he could, but his little cheeks just gave out. 
Furbottom left nothing behind but his beloved theater, his precious kitties, his hat, and of course his bloated corpse, which was lovingly drifted out to sea and immediately ravaged by sharks. And that, children, is the legend of Perham Furbottom, a respectable and apparently delicious a gentleman. But the show must go on, right? Right! For thousands of years, Perham's hat passed from head to head, leader to leader, and the theater still operates to this very day. And what a piece of crap it's become! I bet Perham is rolling over in his sharks right now. I mean, everything's poorly run and the whole place stinks like pee and feet. And with everyone involved walking a fine line between moodiness and full-blown insanity, it's only a matter of time before something truly horrifying happens. But try to keep a sunny disposition as you sink further into darkness, yeah? Nobody likes a crybaby. Perham's hat sure is a mystery. It vexes me so. It truly does. But where did it come from? Well, children, some say the hat was blessed by a voodoo witch doctor and then cursed by another voodoo witch doctor like 20 minutes later. Others claim Perham was adventuring through the treacherous caves of the Nightmare Princess when he found the hat perched atop a giant ruby. A ruby that naturally formed into the shape of a skull. A human skull. Ah! But you know what I think, children? I think the hat is haunted by all the souls of its previous owners, all of their dreams and failures mashed together in a frantic, poisonous scramble of grumpiness and conflicting viewpoints. But I'm the dumb one, right? I mean, you got these voodoo nightmare princess thingies, easily the biggest crocs of sh stuff I've ever heard in my entire life, but I'm the dumb one, that's fine. And not just anyone can don the hat, you know. It calls out only to those who embody the exemplary qualities required. Charity, bravery, handsomeness, gentlemanity, inoffensive smell, E.T. And of course, proper head size. Guess that explains why cats can't wear it. Plus, whoever heard of a cat in a hat? That's preposterous. And heavy weighs the crown. He who wears the hat calls the shots and in a time long forgotten maintained balance and ensured that everyone was plump and happy and wanted for nothing. But all good things come to an end, children. Well, that's not entirely true. I, I figure pizza will always exist. But this hat, let's just say its days of benevolent guidance are long over with. You might as well flip it over and use it as a toilet. I mean, Hattie hasn't lifted a finger to spread the wealth or encourage smiles, and the theater staff is really starting to feel unappreciated. Oh, oh look! This smoldering unrest has given birth to a precious little storm cloud. Oh, look at his little raindrops. And if things don't change around here, this little cloud's gonna grow up into a big, giant, scary cloud and spray us all with a drenching downpour of horrifying madness. But don't lose sight of your mission. Hattie needs you more than ever now. And I know things look bleak, but even the word hopeless has hope in it. Plus, if you rearrange the letters, it spells peace loss. The last part was probably unnecessary, I'm sorry. Now, it goes without saying, but cats really don't like to be ignored. And my oh my, the staff is really upset now. The lack of proper leadership has really twisted their fanny cheeks. Hard! Where's the appreciation? Where's the sparkly money's at? Oh yeah. Good one, bro. And as you continue to conjure magic to distract the masses, your efforts seem in vain as your constant struggle to save Hattie and your friends has only created grander spectacles with harder obstacles to overcome. How's that for a double-edged sword? Sharp, right? And the audience loves it. The applause is deafening. The sandpapery kisses are plentiful and tickly, and they always want more. More. Bigger. Harder. That's what she's... I mean, uh, this place is turning into quite the impressive palace of horror now. I mean, you're gonna be up to your throat in cats and lasers like pew, 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 and spiky things like shing, 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 and bombs and explosions like bang, 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 bang. So I'd stay on my toes if I were you, bang, because it's gonna be a massacre, a fun house of death, except twice, no, three times as deadly. And to ice this little predicament cake of yours, the staff is sick of Hattie's bulls be, uh, nonsense. They're sick of him. Look Look how upset they are! Gaze in horror at the disorderly disorder! Meow! Meow! See? Aren't you scared? You should be! Bang! Crash! Crash! Bang! Meow! Kinda hard to do it justice with these little thingies, but trust me, it's terrible! Everyone's naked and writhing and pooping on the floor, and clawing the expensive curtains. Come on, guys, they're expensive! Everything's going up in a horrifying blaze of chaos! Plus, the picnic was cancelled, and I've kind of got a little headache coming on, and it just never ends. But go forth and give it your all. I won't believe you fought and died for nothing. And perhaps, when it's all over, I'll meet you in the afterlife whilst perusing the Hall of Heroes, where the brave live forever. There's also a Hall of Losers and Failures. You don't want to end up there. Trust me, it's embarrassing.
I admire your tenacity. Truly I do. For sure. But things have really gotten out of control here. You've all quickly gone from precocious, lovable scamps to problematic liabilities. How ridiculous. Are we truly the only sane people on this twisted island? Or perhaps we're the crazy ones, and they're all sane. What a twist that would be. No, that's impossible. These guys are bad poop crazy. We gotta get to Hattie ASAP. As soon as peer home like a bullet. Mega supery fast. But you gotta get through that vault and get that key first. And this particular vault is more dangerous than telling a girl she's chubby. Oh my god! I know, right? It's a poop-inducing nightmare in there. You're gonna be killed until you're dead. But, you know, put your big girl panties on. Everybody has problems. And not to add another ingredient to your rich, chunky stew of personal problems, but the staff's out for blood now. And they mean business. Their spirits have grown far too weary, children. And a weary spirit requires sustenance. Rich, buttery sustenance. Sustenance is only sustained by killing Hattie and starting this insanity all over again with a new person. What a counterproductively futile charade this is. When will they shatter their shackles of ignorance to transcend the bane of their self-afflicted misery? When will they stop being stupid, crazy, dumb jerks? Everyone's kind of sick of it. But I guess there's no reason with madness. Or cats, for that matter. Seriously, try talking sense into a cat. They just stare at you with their lifeless, patronizing eyeballs for like a couple of seconds, and then they just walk away. And then you're like, don't turn your back on me. And they're like, nah. And then you're all like, <laughs> and then they're all like, nah. But it is what it is, I guess. So are you ready for the most importantly important mission of your entire life? I hope so. It's time to show these guys they picked the wrong boat of friends to tangle with. Just hold on a little longer, homie. We're coming for you. It'd be nice if you could meet us halfway, but you know, whatever. Nah! And so we finally made it back to the boat after a harrowing, exhausting adventure. I bet your dogs are barking. I mean, let's face it, most of that ordeal was unpleasant to the point of sucking a whole lot. But now it's time to relax in the forbidden moonlight of yesterday's promises, whatever that means, and treat ourselves to a nice big mug of hot cocoa. What do you say, Hattie? But Hattie wasn't his normal jovial self anymore, children. He didn't say a word. He didn't even respond to hugs. Freaking hugs! He loves hugs. But he wasn't moving. He wasn't even blinking. Where's he gone to? Where? Wiki Wiki, give me that funky beat. So now it's come to an end. We tried so hard, but lost it all. And you were my best friend. You were my Hattington. Hattie. And when you reached for help, we were too late to take your hand. But we're here now. You're the moon and we're your stars. And we're here for you as you fade into the dark. Fade into the dark. I love you, Hattie. So your best friend's a vegetable now, blah, blah, blah. But you know what they say, when life gives you potatoes, you make potato salad. And I got just the recipe. Hit it! Mm, buckle your pants, buckle, buckle your pants. Pull up your socks and dance. Woo! Buck, 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 buckle your pants. Buckle, 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 buckle your pants. Buckle your pants, buckle, buckle your pants. Hey, I said dance. Buck, 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 buckle your pants. Buckle, 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 buckle your pants. Ladies. Yeah? Buckle your pants. Gentlemen. What? Yeah. Buckle your pants. Boys and girls of all ages. Yeah. Buckle your pants or they might fall down. <laughs> hey, you. Buckle, buckle your pants. Buckle your pants. Yes, you. Buckle, buckle your pants. pants. Everybody. Buckle, buckle your pants. But if you don't want to. No. That's fine. Whoa. Buckle your pants. Buckle your pants. Buckle your pants or your pants will fall to the ground. Buckle your pants. Buckle your pants, 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 bu
Oh, I get it. Because of the... Yes. It all makes sense now.